Hey folks, Matt from Ready to the Image.com. Regular viewer and insightful, thoughtful commenter and um, contributor to the channel, Anthony Martin, has contributed once again some insightful thoughts on the Canon 5D Mark IV. Um, as you know, we've done a lot of videos on it. I've been extremely disappointed with the video ability of the 5D Mark IV, although in general, I think for a photographer it's probably a pretty good camera but Anthony brings some as I like to say balance to the force as Anthony is very good at doing Anthony's um, great at constantly sometimes keeping me in check if I start to get a little too upset or uh, perhaps overweighting an issue with something and his thoughts here on the 5d mark IV are very good this is what Anthony has to say he says I think it is plenty and this is with regards to what it offers in I believe 4k video he's talking about and the reason is because 4k video is not impacting my life in a big way I don't think it does so for others either first off the 4k is only important to a small group of people as far as I can see youtubers a subset of them seem to want to edit in it they also say that 1080p content made from 4k video looks better a point I do agree on by the way but also no one wants to view content at 4k I have a 70 inch 4k TV and I don't sit close enough uh, to it to tell the difference between 4k and 1080 that's a very interesting point and I think a lot of people miss that it's um, you know the appropriate viewing distance from you to the TV a lot of people are too close anyways and a lot of people if you put them side by side it's very hard to tell the difference anyways back to Anthony uh, to do so would be not so nice as you would have to be pretty close. I don't use 4K on YouTube because the bandwidth over the internet is not consistently good, so I use 1080p. People talk about future proofing, but I don't think that even in four years the 4K picture will change much, and by then people will be making noise about 8K, which will be even less useful. Brackets, hint, uh, I think we're going to see 6 or 8K coming very soon from Panasonic. Okay, um, so the main benefit of 4K video seems to be to produce good-looking 1080p content. Again, I think there will be relatively few people doing this. Not everyone is going to be a video creator, yet these are the main people who seem to be driving the conversation. I have seen good-looking 1080p content from other Canon cameras, but the 4K stuff does look better. But honestly, the kind of content I see on YouTube really doesn't need top-notch video quality. It is really important to see product reviews in top... Um, it is really important to see product reviews in top-notch video. He's got a question mark. Personally, I think the top-notch video is best when watching movies made by Hollywood. The DPAF does make taking video much easier, and I'm happy to use that at 1080p on a full-frame camera and on my crops. It'll have better noise performance compared to using any crop sensor body, depending on how the 1080 pixels are taken off the sensor. Even if it doesn't, it's still there and one can use it. My real gripe about the 5D Mark IV is the size of the buffer. The 5D Mark III would hold like 34 RAWs when writing um, when writing for a CF card. Going to 30 megapixels reduces that to 21 RAWs while using CF SD. I'd rather have the 34, but for me, the 5D Mark IV would only be used for low light wildlife work and for any non wildlife stuff I do. And for that stuff, the buffer won't matter so much. So I think I can make it work for me. I do wish the price were around 2700 though. I hear a lot of noise about 4K, yet I don't see nearly that many people using it for anything. Again, YouTubers seem to be the main ones and a lot of people watching YouTube are crying foul because the YouTube videographers are making noise. In this regard, I don't think the YouTube videographers are doing the viewer, their viewership much of a service by pushing their views at tech that is uh, only is of use to a relatively small number of people. It's not making that much of an impact on anything. So, um, thanks Anthony, I really appreciate you writing in. Um, good thoughts, interesting um, thoughts here from Anthony on this and some very valid points. I don't necessarily disagree, but I would offer some counterpoints. I think a lot of people have gotten used to using the 5D cameras as a hybrid video camera. Uh, wedding photographers, people doing commercial and production work. I think they are used a lot by pros and I think they were the pros were hoping for a good advancement in the body and 4k is important um, not only for just keeping up with the tech so that you're competitive as a as a company but also for things like the 4k allows us to export better 1080 the 4k allows us to do in-camera crops so that you get the versatility of making it essentially you could look like you're shooting from five different camera angles because of the huge ability to crop into the frames 
the you know Panasonic especially is coming up with so much new and innovative stuff with 4K uh, in camera cropping, in camera zooming, all types of really cool stuff. Um, Canon just needs to keep up to stay relevant. Um, so that's where I would counter there. And in also, I think one of the things you're seeing more and more people twig to, especially when they actually try it, is extracting stills from 4K video, which is really, really nice. Gives you an eight megapixel JPEG. Much better and much more usable and versatile than if you try to ex extract a still from 1080, which is sometimes usable, but very limited. So those are some of the counters, I would say. I, I, I do agree that a lot of YouTubers are upset about this, but I would also say that there's a lot of working professionals, um, a lot of working semi-pros, and a lot of you know working hobbyists that are upset. Um, and it's, it's, a, it's a double thing. It's a question of you know the versatility of 4K, wanting to have it, and wanting, you know, if you're a Canon faithful, you want your Canon camera to be competitive. You want to be proud of it. You want it to, you don't want to have to feel like you have to own a 5D Mark IV for photos and then own a Panasonic GH4 or something else, maybe a Sony, for your video. So those would kind of be my counters to what Anthony's saying here. Although I do, I, I, I do reiterate that Anthony has some great points here and some insightful thoughts and perhaps is more um, exemplary of a lot of the people, a lot of the folks that don't see the issues or don't see the problem with the 5D Mark IV. So thank you very much for your thoughts, Anthony. As always, love it when you write in. Um, you make me think. You make me, you know, challenging points, well thought out, good, uh, good context. You're almost like a, uh, a co-host for me. <laughs> so thank you very much. Thanks for tuning in, folks. Um, leave your comments below. Let me know um, what you think. Um, what do you think of Anthony's points? Are you more on, on Anthony's wavelength for what he thinks about the 5D Mark IV? Or are you more on kind of my wavelength? Like, are you more pro 5D4 and, and you would go for it for the reasons like Anthony says? Or are you more maybe a little disappointed with the 5D4 for the reasons I have more on the video side? Let us know in the comments below. Uh, again, thank you, Anthony. Thanks for tuning in, folks. Stay tuned. We'll be back soon here at artoftheimage.com.